We are back at it again uh, out here at Promise Road Elementary School. Um, once again, just needed a spot with a little bit extra space uh, to test out the fail-safe modes on this uh, GPS long-range drone. Um, I've changed a bunch of settings, like to the point where I don't even remember what all of them are, um, everything that I've changed, so I'm hoping that it's gonna work. I know that I have my fail-safe mode on a certain switch, so I'll go out, test that switch, make sure that that's working. And then what I think is the biggest change that I've made was that now it's programmed to activate that switch when it goes into fail-safe. So I'm reasonably sure that I have it set up correctly now, so that when I shut my radio off, it'll not just plummet from the sky, but will instead go into failsafe recovery and start flying back towards me while I cycle the power back on on my radio. Is that true? We're about to find out. <laughs> it's been really warm and really nice here in Indianapolis, but today, for whatever reason, it just went down to like 50 degrees, so that's pretty unfortunate. You know, throw on a coat, try to stay a little warm, and uh, hopefully we don't crash, because out there is probably a good chunk of water that I don't want to have to go walk through but I put the right shoes on for the job at least so let's give it a go. In the last video about this like half of you guys left comments about how mad you are that the quad was so dirty so I left it dirty for you. <laughs> I have the power here. <laughs> SD card for my DVR. All right. That sounds like So distance from ourself, looking for that, a thousand feet. So we need to be at, sorry, a hundred feet. We need to be at at least 120 meters. So we're already at crystal clear video though, holy. So this is 2000 feet, that should be plenty. So I'm gonna test the fail safe button, which is that one. So I'm now hands off the controls. It's climbing to my designated feet, which I think was like 300-ish, and now it's coming back. So that's working well. So we know that the fail-safe return to home is working, regardless of whether or not it's actually doing it on fail-safe click. It's at least doing it you can hear it. There it is. So now I'm going to go ahead and release that, take back over controls, and fly it back out. And I'm going to go ahead and just turn off my radio. Three, two, one. Oh, it's just dropping. Oh, I was able to take back over. That was terrifying. Holy shit. Still didn't work. Okay, I'm gonna give it a little more altitude and try it again. Maybe I didn't wait long enough. Okay, here goes. Yeah, definitely not working. Hmm. I think I'm far enough away because that was... Okay, so we don't have our settings right. <sighs> That's annoying. I thought we had it this time. Yeah, I'm just going over beta flight settings. Um, should be recording my screen here. Uh, so you should be able to see what I'm seeing. Okay, fail safe modes. So we have AUX4 set 1800. If we look at modes, GPS rescue is that. Then it goes into AUX4, so anywhere in 1800, it should be into GPS rescue mode, which it is. Back over to fail safe. GPS rescue stage two procedure goes to GPS rescue mode. Minimum satellite's seven. And it has a whole bunch of settings for like where, fail safe throttle low delay, Guard time for stage two activation. One, so I have it at a half second, is when it should do that. I have aux one, which is my arm switch on hold, but it's not, but it seems to be fine. Set 1800 aux four, which is GPS rescue mode. I'm gonna turn off sanity checks. And I guess I'm just going to go to your guys' comments and see if anybody has any thoughts, because like, I feel like 
I feel like from what I'm seeing, it should do what I expect. You need to fly at least two, so Schmutz Timo says you need to fly at least 200 meter out before you activate a failsafe, which I was at, what, 12, 1300 feet? That's uh, almost 400 meters. It's the stage one and stage two settings. You need to adjust to instant and no delay, otherwise it drops before kicking in. Well, yeah, but I mean, I put it up to 400 feet and dropped it and it fell for two seconds and it never kicked in. I brought, I dropped it down to four tenths of a second. For me, uh, da David Hein Miller says, for me, GPS failsafe works sometimes perfectly, but most of the time does not. My last experience was at half a mile in the wrong direction. It crashed into a barn or on private property. Okay. <laughs> DZ Quinn. Taro says, I, okay, I got this to work flawless. Just take out your credit card and order this, DJI Mavic Pro. It's because of the delay of crossfire failsafe. That's the only thing I can think of. I noticed that on the last year right before impact. I tried to recover, but it was too late. No, that was that was a gray D66Y. Um, in my video before, what happened was I turned my radio back on. I tried to get it to come back, but that was, that was all me. So it was not about that. Someone says stuff about sanity checks. Phil Whitebird. Hi, I had this issue last year with my long range quad to solve it. It's simple. In beta flight, go to failsafe tab and on your failsafe switch with the correct value on 1500 or 2000. Otherwise, when you switch off your radio, the quad will just fall down. No failsafe activation. So, but I'm pretty sure that's what I have. So, failsafe, failsafe switch set 1800. Can you not activate GPS rescue and failsafe? Or in. No, but it should stay armed when it fail saves. That's the whole, that's what I've got set up. I don't know. Okay, I've tried changing two things on this quad. Uh, the first is I've set the sanity checks to fully off. Um, I read somewhere that that might be affecting something, even though there were minimal sanity checks on already. So I don't know what that's about totally. And then the next thing I'm gonna try to do is play around with the crossfire settings. I feel like I'm doing something wrong there because everything, every video that I've seen is like people messing around with like a free sky, like a 2.4. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do my first test with uh, just having turned off the sanity checks, go all the way out, um, try it there, and come back, and then I'm gonna do the second one. So ho hopefully I can do the same recovery that I did just a minute ago. Um, and then I'm gonna do another one um, where I uh, test out changing some crossfires. I'm gonna try to change one thing at a time from now on out. All right, we've got our satellites. She's ready. Bye. Okay, testing the switch one last time. Switching. doing weird stuff but it's kind of working no I don't know where it's going I don't know where it thinks home is I'm gonna go ahead and manually bring it back that was weird yeah it's like pointing at home off to one direction let us power cycle that okay I'm at distance I'm gonna hit the switch it's climbing Pretty aggressively. And now it's roughly coming home. Okay, so I feel confident that that's working. So I'm going to stay at 200 feet. I'm going to get right over that mark so I know where it is if it crashes and power off. Oops, I think I don't think I actually powered that off. Okay, that was me. That was scary. And now it doesn't know where home is because I did that. Whoopsie. <laughs> All right, bringing it back. That was dumb. So I accidentally, I accidentally powered it off, uh, or I accidentally didn't power off my radio, but instead I accidentally hit the disarm switch and then powered off my radio and so it lost track of where the home point was and <laughs> that was that was user error there that was my bad i just completely missed the power switch on my radio so i'm gonna go ahead and bring it in and land it swap that battery and try it again 
that was stupid. Okay, attempt number three for the day. Let's see how this goes. 19 satellites, return to home point set. Okay, this time I'm not gonna flub the switches. Taking off. It's like just starting to want to rain too, so I'm like, yeah, let's keep going. The 2,000 feet is roughly 400 meters, so we're far enough away. Not quite 2,000 feet, but close enough. Okay, testing the switch. Looks good, getting rid of the switch. All right, I'm gonna climb to 200 feet. And turning off the radio. Oy, 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 oy. Okay, just barely saved that shit. Return to home point is now set wrong. Yep, that is not working at all. Huh. Alright, so now let's take a look at the crossfire settings. So, what I'm going to do with the failsafe mode is switch it from FF's pause to cut. I think I saw someone else say that somewhere as well. So we're going to try that. Here we go. Home point didn't set. Okay, 17 satellites taken off. That looks better. Flying out. Man, why does this have to be so confusing? Why can't it just work? So what I think FS pause is doing is basically saying, go to the commands that I tell you, the stick commands, or where the sticks I were when you set failsafe, which just sets it to um, disarmed. And so I think that's probably part of the problem. So now I would set to cut, which should do the same thing as last time. So I'm gonna go ahead and disarm, or re power off my radio. There it goes. <gasps> It's working! Guys! Okay, that was what the problem was. So now, I right, radio's off. Quad is starting to kind of come home. I'm just chilling, just waiting. Just chilling, just waiting. Uh, oh, crap, I've got video back now. I'm grab, taking my radio back on. I'm leaving it armed. It's in failsafe mode, so I'm going to flip the failsafe. Wait, how do I stop it? Oh, there it comes. Okay, that was scary, but we got it. So I think I need a failsafe switch set. So that's gonna be next step. I can't believe it worked, guys! Oh, we've been working on this for so long. Okay, so that's what it was. In Crossfire, you have to set it from FS pause to cut. And cut is what allows Betaflight to take over what it was doing. Okay, so we're gonna put a failsafe switch on so we can take over. Uh, so basically, once that what's gonna happen is we're gonna fly out when it uh, when I like lose connection or turn off my radio, as this case may be. I'm going to uh, turn off my radio, turn on the failsafe switch, so that when I get the connection back between the quad and the radio, I can flip off that failsafe switch and it'll put the control back in my hands. I've made two changes this time. The first is that I have lowered the threshold from four to two um, on the delay. So it should activate after a quarter second of no control, no connection at all. Um, and then the second thing is that I've also added the failsafe switch um, so I can take back over. Um, it's this switch here. So once it, once it starts failsafe mode, I just flip this in and it will allow me to, when it gets control, flip it back off and have full control of the drone again. So let's give this one more go. Okay, I, I've made two changes this time. The first is that um, 
I have lowered the threshold from four to two um, on the delay. So it should activate after a quarter second of no control, no connection at all. Um, and then the second thing is that I've also added the fail safe switch um, so I can take back over. Um, it's this switch here. So once it, once it starts fail safe mode, I just flip this in and it will allow me to, when it gets control, flip it back off and have full control of the drone again. So let's give this one more go. Home position set. Yep. Heading out on our final mission, hopefully. And I want to know why my battery is sagging so bad. Get some new ones. New 5S. Rescue NA. I'm down to six satellites for some reason. Oh, now I'm back to eight. Eleven. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is my spot. Climb to about 200 and radio off hoping switching my fail safe i didn't do okay so i flipped my switch but it didn't wasn't me that did that so now the, the drone is completely under its own control you can see my radio is completely off right there keeping an eye okay so now i'm turning my radio back on it's still in fail safe it's still waiting still connecting And now I have control again. Oh, that is so cool. So now if we fly out over this direction. And it's just kind of going away. I'm going to turn my radio off. Just no input. Boink. Oh, that is so cool. Okay. Watching, turning radio back on, and as soon oh it's so it's as soon as it has nothing to do with the switch. So as soon as I just do any kind of input, so I'll fly back over here. And just let it go. Radio off. Waiting. It's thinking. Oh, fail safe. So now I'm gonna turn my radio back on and as soon as the sticks give me input, okay, it just takes over and I'm back in control. So we'll let it bring me home. Oh, that is so, yes! Oh, I was so ready to give up on this project. But like, so now imagine, you know, you're flying down the side of a mountain or something, I don't know what, or you're out at a distance and suddenly it cuts out and fails you now, your drone will at least start coming back towards you to give you the chance to take over. So I'm gonna turn my radio back on so I'm ready to take over. So now it's still in fail safe mode. I just haven't taken control of anything. Now it's straight above, ish. And it's just kind of bobbing, which is fine. So now I'm taking over and I'm bringing it in myself. Oh, yes. We got it. We got it. Oh, I've been wanting to get that to work for so long now. Oh, I'm so glad it works. I can't believe, I mean, I, I knew the, the settings to make it work. I, figu I figured I had it right, but I was just slightly off, especially on the crossfire. So now that I know all those settings, I'll take everything that I've learned. We'll go back to the computer and I'll kind of run through all of the final settings of what I've got to make this work. Um, again, everything that I've read out there uh, says that I really shouldn't trust the that fail safe mode too much. Um, like it's like a last ditch, last ditch effort um, for people that are trying to do long range. But you know what, it, as long as it's working somewhat um, and then I have like, you know, that, that last ditch effort of like, 
I need something to come back right now. That's uh, that's a good to know. Um, dang, I'm really excited about that. I can't believe how much work that took to get it to work. But now that we know the crossfire settings combined with the beta flight settings should be repeatable on different systems. So thanks for hanging out. Um, we'll go back to the computer uh, and check out all of the settings that I've got set up in there to make it work. Stay flying. Actually, before we go, let's do one quick freestyle run. I've actually flown this place a long time ago, like two years ago, uh, right when I was first getting into drones. Um, and uh, so I'm gonna send this through the trees over there for a little bit, uh, just nice and cruisy, seven inch style. So let's do that. <laughs> Okay, give me a break. I haven't flown through trees in analog for a long time. the quad plugged in here via beta flight if you go into expert mode and then over into fail safe these are the settings that we're using see you i didn't change the pulse settings and i didn't really change anything here except gps rescue set 1800 so when the fallback happens when it goes into stage two basically i want it to do these things it's going to automatically pick these four and then it's going to hold on the existing positions of these and set gps rescue to on so gps rescue is the switch that i use in the video to activate the fail safe mode so that it turns around and starts flying home then over on the fail safe switch stage one is normal stage two i have the guard time for stage two activation after signal loss set to two which is two tenths of a second so about a quarter second and then the fail safe throttle low delay that's default then out of the fail safe procedures instead of drop or land i choose gps rescue mode and then the angle that it flies back is 32 degrees the initial altitude in meters means that it's going to climb to this altitude which i think is like 320 feet or so descent distance is the distance at which it will descend away 
from me on its way home. So like once it gets to me or within 50 meters of me, that's when it's going to start dis- uh, start descending. The ground speed obviously is just the speed in meters per second, how fast it's going to move. Throttle minimum 1100, throttle maximum 1600 so that it doesn't push it too hard. I actually should probably lower that after having watched my video. Um, throttle hover is roughly where on your throttle resolution that it hovers. Um, you play with this a little bit based on how things are going. Minimum satellites, I set to 7. I, you could probably change that around. Um, and then sanity checks are off. I should... I probably should have this go back to failsafe only, uh, but I need to test it again with this on set to failsafe only just to make sure that it's uh, not going to end up doing anything crazy at any time. So those are the settings. Then on the crossfire, the only setting that you have to change, and that's, it seems like it's been the important one for everything that we've worked on, is that you change the failsafe mode on the receiver to... FS or from FS pause to cut and when it does cut it will immediately default to what beta flight is requiring and that's going to make sure that it will uh, not keep the or not disarm the quad so what I think was happening was that because I had it set to FS pause what that's essentially doing is taking the existing settings that I have set in crossfire and the switches that were the way that they were set when I set the failsafe, which included the arm switch as disarmed. And when that happened, what was happening was that the whole drone was completely disarming before it had a chance to send this command here to go into GPS rescue mode. And as a result, it would just plummet out of the air. So by switching it to cut, basically what it's saying is telling the crossfire, get out of the way, let beta flight handle all of the cross or all of the failsafe settings and that's what it took to get it to actually come home so i hope this is all useful to you uh really excited that it finally worked stay flying